Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Tuesday, April 11th, 4.09 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in an uptrend. We've been excluding industrials, financials, and real estate from sectors that we're focused on, but we may be changing that. Industrials, in fact, all three of them, uh, real estate with multiple closes above the 21 now, and XLI industrials and XLF financials closed above the 21 today. If we can survive CPI tomorrow, and uh, get a second close above the 21, we'll be taking off the exclusion of these sectors. But oddly, the sector that is going from strongest to possibly lagging, certainly on a relative strength basis, is technology, which had led this uh, move up for the most of the year. Let's go over here to the trend gauge, market leadership, uptrend, bullish, yellow arrow uh, due to the rotation and really not making much progress at all. You almost have to buy right off the 21 and take your profits on strength. Uh, Short-term 21-day moving average, all five of the major indexes uh, now above the 21. Small caps with their first close above the 21 today as they continue to attempt to recover from the uh, banking liquidity crisis. Medium term, mixed bag, the big three large cap indexes firmly above their 50 day moving average, mid and small below their 50 day. Long term, mid caps regained the 200 day moving average today. We wanna to make sure that that holds into the end of the week. Again, the large cap uh, indexes above their long term 200 day small caps continue to lag. So what happened today? Expected kind of not a lot to happen today with uh, a, a big inflation report tomorrow morning, although the market seems recently to have been putting less emphasis on inflation and more emphasis on recession. Uh, we traded in a tight range all day. We showed some decent strength after lunch into about 3.30, but real, real weakness uh, the last 30 minutes. Tech lagged all day. Uh, here are the final numbers. RG7, this is our seven ETF growth composite, up 0.64%. S&P 500, just barely negative. NASDAQ 100 week all day down 0.64. Microsoft got a downgrade, and it was, due, it was a downgrade based on weakness in their cloud uh, service based on what this analyst says, and that trickled over to Google and Amazon, who also have uh, big cloud presence, so that weighed all day on the NASDAQ 100. Dow up a third of a percent, mid caps up 0.9, Russell 2000 small caps up 0.8, Global Diversified 6040 stock and bond up 0.1%, in-house protection down 0.16% today, dragged down by mostly by NVIDIA and uh, ONON. Uh, pulling back near that 30 area, in fact, closing below the 30 area. So a uh, little bit of weakness, but still acting uh, fine relative to how we expect uh, power earnings gaps to act. Let's get into the charts now. Uh, here's the S&P 500. Um, this hasn't, is it fully updated? This hasn't fully updated, barely closing, as you can see below. Let's look at a five minute chart here and you can see a uh, mild close up, uh, one shakeout here down to 4102. So good news that we held 4100. And then a nice uh, higher highs and higher lows going all the way into uh, three o'clock and then the rug pull into the close going from up three tenths of a percent to uh, basically flat, still no damage done to the chart. In fact, we're at the top of this six day range, tight range, six days, you know what that means. We're coiling for a move one way or the other. We're near the top of the range. To break the bottom of the range would be below 4070, break out of the top of the range above 4133. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100 now. This looks fine, looks like a flag. Uh, but it's also kind of lagging more than I would like to see it on a relative strength basis. Let me point this out right here. This, uh, when we put this low in, undercut and closed right on the EMA on 328, we closed at 307 that day. Uh, today we closed at three, basically 316. So a 3% move higher, 
but the S&P moved quite a quite a bit more higher uh, during that same two week period, as you can see relative strength making new lows well ahead of price being 3% lower uh, than where we sit right now. Still holding the pivot, still holding that key fit, fib at the 315.59 area, but we always pay attention to uh, when a sector was leading that it turns into a laggard. Now, this is the type of uh, play where one day it can completely turn around, money flows in to all the big cap tech as uh, portfolio managers chase performance. Um, but we did sell our QLD today uh, on the weakness uh, for a 1% loss. And during that time period, the S&P uh, had a half percent gain. So uh, very clearly lagging during that, just a three-day holding period, but we, we wanted our exposure to be a little less than it was going into CPI uh, tomorrow, where as we know, anything can happen. Uh, let's move on to the big cap index that has been leading now, going from laggard to leader, certainly over the last week and a half, Dow Jones Industrial Average making recent highs. Let's go to mid caps. You can see mid caps getting uh, two closes above the 21 now, two closes above the 200 day moving average. So uh, note the relative strength line there over the last three sessions and IWM also showing relative strength over the last three sessions first close above the 21 day exponential moving average you can see still see it's uh, uh, about uh, let's see 2.2 percent below the 200 day three and a half percent below the 50 day declining 50 day moving average but uh, trying to recover trying to break out of this range for the that we've been in for the last uh, three to four weeks uh, trying to put in a bottom on the bank weakness. So those are the major indexes uh, with the big cap tech lagging the equal weight QQEW outperformed today, uh, barely flat versus down 0.6% uh, for the NASDAQ 100. RSP also outperformed uh, up 0.66% versus a flat uh, market cap weighted S&P 500. Let's go to the dollar. It was weak for pretty much most of the day. So right now we failed, the dollar failed into that declining 21 day moving average. That's a good sign for stocks. Note we are coming off of oversold there. Let's go to the VIX. VIX was uh, down most of the day, spiked toward the end of the day as uh, the indexes came off, but trading in this tight range between 18, 20 and uh, 20 uh, for the last two weeks here. Let's go to bonds. Bonds didn't do much today. Uh, TLT was up, which means the long-term rates came down. All of the other uh, durations, prices were down, which means the rates were up, but very slightly. Broad bond index, you can see basically flat. Not a lot going on there. Here's TLT. We have a TMF position, which is three times the TLT. Um, and uh, that uh, bouncing at the holding V8 EMA. Let's go to the yields very quickly. The TNX up a half percent, really a little bit lower. Remember, these rates are as of three o'clock Eastern, not four o'clock. And the 30 year basically flat. Let's flip to precious metals. Now we were weak on the dollar, and that meant gold. Uh, stayed with the inverse correlation up six tenths of a percent, regaining the eight EMA. Silver SLV uh, breaking out higher close here at 23.0. Oh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's a new high close uh, from this last leg up here on silver, uh, up 0.7 percent. GDX, gold and silver stocks up 1.74. Tried to. Uh, Week into the close, you can see here on a five minute chart, it was much stronger for most of the day, but peaked actually uh, late morning it peaked and then sold off the rest of the day. And uh, the winner, uh, Bitcoin here breaking out. Uh, look, you can see here on a 60 minute chart, this is a clear breakout. Uh, and we're considering adding this. I know some clients we have on a list, they don't like to own Bitcoin and we won't buy it for them if they don't want it. but uh, with this breakout, we're going to see the reaction to CPI tomorrow. This is a nice low risk entry on the breakout because the range was tight. So um, 
basically less than a 10% stop we would have uh, on this or position size would we wouldn't get more than a 2% position size but uh, Bitcoin the winner today money flowing into that let's get to the tail of the tape and the rest of the charts very quickly explain what we do here at Revere Active Management. We evaluate the market across three time frames, as we showed on the trend gauge here. Also evaluate market leadership. That the health of that dictates, uh, and the sector evaluation that we do dictates how we allocate client money. And um, we dodged most of the uh, carnage in the 27 and a half percent at the low loss in 2022, putting money back to work as we're above the indexes now, uh, avoiding mid caps, financials, uh, real estate and industrials, as I mentioned. But um, if you're interested in an approach like this, reach out to us. My email is Don at RevereAsset.com or my partner, Dan Stewart, Dan at RevereAsset.com or you can call us at 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. This chart here, avoiding bear markets, is why we are so, uh, is why we pay so much attention to risk management, especially when we're below the 200-day moving average. All of these bear markets occur under the 200. Now that we're back above it, uh, re-engaging with the market. So let's go to the tail of the tape. You can pause this and uh, read the whole thing. I'm going to hit the highlights here. Uh, before the open, one of the Fed heads, Williams, said, yeah, if inflation weakened, we need to consider cutting rates. That uh, spiked futures uh, a little bit. Um, and as I said, you know, trended up most of the day, gave it up the last hour. CPI tomorrow before the open. Odds for a quarter point basis. Uh, 25 basis point hike have jumped now up to 72% versus 28% for uh, no hike. Tomorrow's result will, uh, and then we've got PPI the next day. Uh, that'll have a lot to say with whether or not this imbalance stays. As far as the day count goes, we were in a seven day consolidation now, been 12 days uh, above the ADMA and the 21 EMA, and today, um, all 11 sectors now made it at least one close above the 21 day moving average, joining the large cap indexes uh, and also the small and mid cap indexes now too, with uh, the mid caps two closes above, small caps one close above. Not a whole lot with, uh, the, with the levels as we traded tight today, fade into the close, put a little bit of a damper uh, on the day. Uh, nine out of 11 sectors up, just XLC and XLK, two of the three tech sectors were down on the day. Uh, home builders, that, that comment by Williams about cutting rates lit the home builders on fire. Let's look at ITB real quick. Uh, and you can see, and this is typical of what the market's been doing. Last week, breakout, strong breakout, clear breakout. Next day, follow through. Uh, the following day, give back most of it. Two days of a breakdown below the moving average. Okay, we stop going down, we rally into the moving averages, and then a break back above it as if none of this ever happened. This is very typical of what the market's been doing. You got to get in close to the moving averages and you got to be prepared uh, to take profits. It's uh, a pretty treacherous market and certainly not conducive to the way we normally uh, operate, which is why we've been focused more on the indexes than on individual names. Um, banks had a decent day, as I said, trying to put in a bottom gold, silver, gold and silver stocks, retail pick. Uh, this is the um, base metal companies, oil strong, transport strong, 20 out of 20 transports up. That shouldn't happen if a recession recession uh, is approaching. Bitcoin up, uh, really tight range on the bonds, on the downside, the dollar. Uh, tech, semiconductors, and software. So we added to ONON uh, as it showed some initial strength, ended up closing back below 30, uh, and then we sold QLD into the close um, on the weakness and just wanting to minimize risk going into pre-market CPI. So the bottom line, tight range rotation day with tech lagging, again, weak close, CPI in the morning. Uh, I mean, we closed within the basically where we closed yesterday, uh, barely any uh, change there. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. We'll see what the reaction is. It's not really the number that's important. It's the reaction to the number.
And if you don't uh, believe me, one of the biggest, honestly, uh, surprises and from the market, the market always uh, fascinates me. But on 1013, last, uh, last October, we had a massive miss on CPI. And what we do, we gap down and that put in a bottom because you just can only go down so far. This was a, me a, a big move down and it was anticipating that move. The market anticipates data like this. You can see how bad that move down was and then we finally get the bad data and what does the market do on it? It rallies. Uh, and that's why the market is so confounding to some. It just does not make sense sometimes. So we went through the tail of the tape. Let's go through. Uh, a few charts and we're going to focus on what we own in-house here and let's start with ON. ON, we got stopped last week uh, when it when it uh, broke, re-entered one and a half percent yesterday, one and a half percent today. So we've got a three percent position on this. Uh, both bought above 30 so we're down slightly on this. Um, should hold the 21 day moving average on any pullback. Uh, let's see, TLT, we already showed this. We've got the 5% position in TMF, which is three times that. Uh, GLD, we continue to hold that. We're looking at SLV and GDX also, as these continue to show relative strength, but they will probably react strongly along with the dollar to whatever we see uh, for CPI tomorrow. Uh, TMDX, uh, we continue to hold a small 1% position on that with about a 12% gain. Uh, not going to give this much more room if it continues to trickle down by the end of the week. We'll lock that gain in. NVIDIA, rough day today, but a great chart. Really going sideways for the last three weeks above the 21 EMA. Lululemon, not making any progress since its gap up, but still holding the gap up very well. This is one of the outperformers today. Uh, Rambus, very strong semiconductor up most of the day. Uh, closed basically unchanged on the late day reversal, along with most of the rest of the market. Uh, and that is it. That's everything that we own in-house. And with that, I'm going to wrap it up. As always, love to hear from you. Email is don at revereasset.com. The phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. Remember, it's not how much you make in the markets. It's how much of that you can keep. And with that, I'll wrap up Tuesday, April 11th. This is Don Vandenborg with Revere Asset, telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.